In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulallah. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're continuing with the topic of how to understand and benefit from the mistakes of the companions. We're now into the caliphate of Ali. We talked about how Uthman was brutally murdered by the rebels, and they basically forced the caliphate on Ali. Ali did not want to be the caliph but he was forced into it. And then we talked about the first thing he did was remove the governors of the provinces that were appointed by Uthman. And this was a big mistake. He acted too soon. He should have listened to his council who tried to tell him to wait, to give the people time to heal from what they had went through acting too soon would appear would make the people think that perhaps you played a role in Uthman's murder which Ali did not as you guys know as when they murdered uh, Uthman Ali's sons were there fighting with their life to protect him so Ali did not play a role in Uthman's murder so what happened this is what led to the differences between him and Muawiyah. Okay? When Ali replaced the governors, the governor of Kufa, who was a Musa, a Shari, refused to step down. And also the governor of Syria refused to step down. The governor of Syria was Muawiyah, and Muawiyah was the cousin of Uthman. Now, Musa Ashari, who was an eminent companion, he did not step down, but he let Ali know, I'm going to step down, but give me time. He said, it's going to take time, but I want you to know that I do accept you, and I give my allegiance to you as leader over the Muslims. So Abu Musa Ashari did not step down immediately. He told Ali, I'm not disrespecting you. It's just that things need to be taken care of here, and I'll step down eventually. But Muawiyah outright refused. Muawiyah said that he would acknowledge the, the leadership of Ali only after Ali brought to account all the people who were responsible for the assassination or the murder of Uthman. So Muawiyah told Ali, I am not stepping down until you give me vengeance, until you bring to justice all those who played a direct role in the murder of Uthman. So when Ali heard that Muawiyah refused to step down, he sent an emissary to him. And that emissary was to explain to Muawiyah Ali's position. And Ali assured Muawiyah that every possible effort would be made to trace down, track down the murderers of Uthman. He, he told uh, Muawiyah, I loved Uthman just as much as you. And I want justice for the murder of Uthman too. He said, I, as the leader of the Muslims, I give you my word. I will bring those guilty to, to account. But give me some time. He told him, I was forced into this position. I did not want to be caliph. I did not want to be leader. They forced it. The rebels forced this upon me. Give me a chance to get my feet wet. And then I will trace down all the corporates and have them dealt with. And then he advised Muawiyah, in the meantime, give me your allegiance and step down and cooperate with uh, whoever I appoint. So we can show Islamic Brotherhood and we can show solidarity to the rest of the Muslims in the world. And also Ali let Muawiyah know. He said, one of the things I swore to do as leader is that I am not going to allow the rebels to destroy us. I am not going to allow for any type of dissension. So that was basically the message that Ali sent to Muawiyah hoping that Muawiyah would cooperate with him and they could be brothers in faith and, and work together. When Muawiyah received the emissary, he listened to what Ali suggested, 
but he kept the emissary for three months. He did not allow the, 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 the representative to go back to Ali with an answer. Instead, Muawiyah began his campaign, his campaign, which was to get Kisas for the murder of Uthman. So what Muawiyah did was he sent agents to Mecca and to other parts of the, of the Muslim lands to relate how Uthman was killed to tell the people personally how Uthman died tragically in his home, a prisoner in his home, right with, there with his wife and how his wife, uh, her, her fingers were cut off trying to protect him. So Muawiyah started his campaign to try to bring to justice all those guilty of playing the role in murdering him. Okay? And what this did was simply anger Ali. It angered Ali. After three months, Muawiyah allowed Ali's representative to return back to Medina, and he sent a letter with the representative. And when the letter was given to Ali, Ali opened the letter and saw that it was nothing but a blank page. When Ali saw the blank page, he asked the, his representative, what is this? What is this? And the man said, well, I want you to know that there are no less than 60,000 Syrians who are mourning the death of Uthman. And they are gathering together right now to demand vengeance for his murder. And they took his bloody shirt, the shirt that he was killed in, and made a, a war standard out of it. And they are on their way here now to try to find all those who played a role in his assassination. Okay? When Ali was told this, he became angry. He said, again, one of the promises that I made when I was forced into this position was I would not allow any sedition, any more uprisings against the government. He said, this is pure sedition. And when he's made that announcement, one of his guards said, kill the Syrian, kill this messenger. And the messenger tried to run away. Ali allowed the messenger to leave. He said, I promised him safety. We're not going to kill him. Let him go. But when the messenger left, Ali let the people know, beware, Shaitan is now playing another role. Not only did Shaitan bring about, play the role in, this, in, this, in the death of Uthman, but now Shaitan has gathered his army to try to tear us down again as Muslims. So now, Ali was faced with a new dilemma as a leader. He now knew that Muawiyah was gathering together an army of men to come and demand vengeance. So now Ali had to address this. He ordered the raising of, of levies with a view of undertaking an expedition against Syria. So what he did was he tried to, Ali tried to put together an army of his own so he could fight against the Syrians. So what he did was he called for all the Muslims of Medina to gather at the mosque and he addressed them. He told them now or never, if you fail to fight, you will lose power. We are now under attack by the Syrians seeking vengeance for Uthman. He said, I, I encourage everyone to sign up to fight, to show solidarity. I have high hopes in the mercy of Allah that he will set right what these people are bent on setting wrong. So, you know, Ali gave the cry for jihad, in other words. For the people of Medina to gather together to get an army together so they can defend themselves against Muawiyah and his attack. But unfortunately, Ali's appeal did not have the desired result that he wanted. 
Many of the Muslims refused to get involved. Remember, the prophet warned that after his death, the Muslims of Medina would divide and separate and kill each other. A lot of the companions remembered those hadiths. So they chose to not get involved. A lot of people did not want to fight against other Muslims. Muawiyah was a Muslim. These were regular brothers and sisters in faith. They were getting ready to do jihad against. So they refused to, to, to sign up for the war. And Ali became hurt and angry. So he called for a special meeting. And he tried to speak about the importance of jihad, the importance of supporting the caliph, and all of that. But it didn't really work because, again, these were Muslims they were going to go to war against and their own brothers and sisters, not only in faith but in blood, too. I want you guys to remember Ali and Muawiyah were, were related, too. Not only was uh, Muawiyah uh, Uthman's cousins, he was a cousin to uh, Ali, too. They were all from the same family, the same tribe. They were all the Prophet Muhammad's family. Okay? So a lot of the, these companions were all related. And things became even worse when Telha and Zubair defected from Ali. They went and joined up with uh, Muawiyah in Syria. Telha and Zubair. They defected. They had originally given their allegiance to Ali, but now they rejected, they revoked their allegiance, and they left and joined up with Muawiyah. And again, Telha was an eminent companion. He was one of the first to become Muslim. He became Muslim when he was only 15 years old. He was also with the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and took part in the battles that they fought. He played a great role with the Battle of Uhud, protecting the Prophet. When the people had abandoned the Prophet at the Battle of Uhud, Telha was one of the ones who, who put his own self over the, over the Prophet to protect him. He also ended up marrying one of the daughters of Abu Bakr, and he became a very rich man. Okay? The people of Basra, the rebels from Basra, were the ones who supported him and wanted him to be the caliph. After Uthman was murdered, you know, uh, he gave his allegiance to Ali, okay, but now he had revoked it. And Zubair was another eminent companion. He was the nephew of Khadijah. He was Khadijah, the first wife of the prophet's nephew. And his mother was a, an aunt of the prophet. And he was uh, also related to the prophet. He was the prophet's first cousin. And he, too, participated in the uh, Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, and all that, the Battle of the Ditch, and all of that. The people of Kufa made him popular. And the, he was the one that the people of Kufa wanted to be the caliph. And also, both Telha and Zubair were two of the ten men given the good news of paradise in their lifetime. So these were two eminent companions. And both of them defected. They left and joined up with Muawiyah. And this made Ali uh, look kind of bad, too, because he had lost the support of two of the most important companions. In fact, before Telha and Zubair left and joined up with Muawiyah, they both met with Ali. And they both suggested to him that if one of them was made a governor of Kufa and the other was made governor in Basra, this would help him. It would help to give, you know, some type of comfort to uh, the people. But Ali did not accept their suggestion. You know, they try to tell him, make us governors of Basra and Kufa, and that will make it easy for the people to accept you as a caliph and give you their allegiance. But Ali didn't do that. Instead, he told Telha and Zubair that he wanted them both to remain in Medina at his side and to serve as his counselors. But this is not what they wanted. 
they became angry at him for that. They asked Ali to allow them to go to Mecca so they can make Umrah. Ali refused. And when he refused, that's when Telha and Zubair both escaped Medina in secret. They both uh, escaped Medina uh, and left and went to Mecca. And when Telha and Zubair reached Mecca, who did they join up with? They joined up with Aisha, who was the wife of the prophet. They were both related to her. One of Aisha's sisters was married to Zubair, and another one of her sisters was married to Telha. So Telha and Zubair defected from Ali. They es escaped, ran away to Mecca, and they went under the protection of Aisha. And from there, that's when they ended up hooking up with Muawiyah. So we'll stop right here for today. I want you guys to see what's happening here. This is the beginning of Ali's leadership. He didn't want to be leader. It was forced on him, okay? But he wanted to try to, you know, make what was a bad situation right. He didn't want to make the same mistakes he made before. He wanted to stomp out the rebels. He wanted to also get rid of the leadership that um, uh, Uthman had in place because he felt that those people were too arrogant and replaced them, but it was a hasty decision. He should have waited. And then when Telha and Zubair tried to help him, they said, look, make us governors. Give me governorship over Kufa. Give him governorship over Basra. And we'll get the people to support you because it'll look like you are really working with us. But when Ali did not do that, you know, that made it look bad too. So we'll stop right here for today. Tomorrow what I'm going to do is quiz you on what we talked about today. I want you guys to listen to this lecture again tonight. Read over the PowerPoint. Try to understand the meaning, not try to memorize words and sentences. So that when I do put the quiz up tomorrow about what happened here, you can answer the questions correctly from your heart. And then we'll speak about what happened after that. What happened after Telha and Zubair joined up with Aisha? What did Aisha do? What was her reaction? What was her comments on this whole situation? We'll talk about that tomorrow. So we'll stop right here. If you